guys. So this is going to be video number two. Um, I'm going to call this the incredibly ridiculous idea of attempting to geometrically translate both quantum theory and particle physics into one shape on a graph. It's absurd. I don't understand how anyone could possibly come up with this idea, but here we go. It starts with a researcher named Garrett Lisi, cool name by the way, who graduated from some university in California, did some stuff, moved to Hawaii, and decided to uh, work part-time while working on this theory. I'll put a link in the description below to uh, give you a better understanding of who he is. This video was also inspired by um, another YouTuber named Joe Scott. He has another video around this theory that is uh, much, more co much more coherent than anything I could ever do. So Garrett's theory is that you can geometrically map out everything to help understand how the universe works. So what he does is he takes every particle related to um, uh, particle physics, all 17 of them, as well as their negative and positive charges, and certain ones that have uh, different orientations, up and down, left and right. And so he takes the initial ones, maps them out onto the chart, and then he, he maps their, um, uh, pardon me, he maps out their positive and negative uh, charges and so on and so forth until you or um, until you have this incredibly complex graph. You realize you cannot translate those onto a 2D graph. So what you do is you rotate them around each other into different dimensions where you can actually create the, or where you can actually mathematically grab the, uh, their connections between everything. It's absolutely, the theory is absolutely beautiful, and I believe extremely elegant, though a lot of people think it's absolutely absurd. Absolutely absurd. So, uh, you start out with, you know, a point, like so, first dimension, quote unquote, then second dimension with direction, like so, third dimension, um, oh, sorry, second dimension, like so, there we go, which creates 2D objects, and then finally, a third dimension, which creates 3D objects, a cube, which is what is which is how we perceive the world around us. Now, in any sort of physical, or theory around physics, um, there's actually eight different dimensions. Now, what you do with these, with that initial initial 2D graph that uh, he created, is rotate the particles and charges around each other into an eight uh, until eventually you get an eight-dimensional shape, and then you translate that further and further and further down and render it further down until you get a 2D shape. Um, a very basic idea around it is if you pass photon or if you pass light or photons onto a three-dimensional object. The shadow you get is two-dimensional. You can do that in different ways, theoretically speaking, with higher dimensional figures. Now, um, a basic idea around uh, how or why these can be geometrically translated is that when you continue to move the, uh, from a third dimension to a fourth dimension, you get what's called a tetrahedron. The third dimension is technically this cube inside the fourth dimension being the cube outside, and the connections, or the relations of the particles, which are the vectors of each shape, are translated by, or are connected by these lines. You can do it, or you can do it again to the sixth dimension, and again to the eighth dimension. Sorry, um, again to the eighth dimension. Now, when you're talking about the actual mathematic theories, you only go from uh, simple numbers to uh, uh, exponents, and then you go to quaternions, quaternions, which is the fourth dimension, and then octonions, which is the eighth. And uh, it's actually provable that you cannot go further than that eighth dimension. Now, this is already hard. When you render that eight-dimensional shape down into one sh or one two-dimensional uh, representation, you get what's called an E8 Lee group, which is what the thumbnail is going to be. This video is going to be talking about that specific group. Um, now, when you break all particles or all or anything down into its absolute simplest form, 
you get uh, tetrahedrons. And these tetrahedrons in space and time um, connect with the, each other infinitely. All right? And so every time, and they're constantly moving. So every time one tetrahedron moves, and it uh, changes the position of another one, and so on and so forth. And that changing of position creates, um, pardon me, creates different particles based on its specific vibration. Really cool idea, right? Except the only way these tetrahedrons can actually change their positions is by constant, or is by conscious observation, by physically or by it being physically known about by an outer whatever. This is the idea of consciousness, all right? So, um, and the theory that relates this to particle physics is called emergence theory, I believe. Now, where is this consciousness coming from? No one knows. No one knows if there is a consciousness. It is the universe itself that is the consciousness in this theory. This is all gobbledygook. It's complete nonsense to me and anyone that I know. I don't know if, or I don't think anyone that I know has even attempted to, uh, or has watched any videos or attempted to understand any of these physics in the first place. Now, my whole idea and why I love this theory so much is when you take hallucinogens, I'm not saying I have, based on my uh, um, perceived understanding of what people uh, see when they take, say, LSD or psilocybin, you see geometrical shapes. You see constantly flowing shapes of just absurd dimensions that you could not perceive otherwise, right? And you physically see them. It's always, or people confuse this uh, with different, uh, or with different um, shapes and ideas, but I like to think that this specific geometric shape, which is which you can actually base around the golden ratio of nature, um, is what he's talking about in the first place. <sighs> this is already confusing, right? So my idea around this is that when you take, um, geez, I'm already gone. When you take hallucinogens like these, they expand your consciousness, right? Um, that's the main idea around taking these hallucinogens and why they're such a cultural phenomenon and why so many different cultures revolve spiritual ideas around them is because they help you, quote-unquote, expand your mind. Now, there's another idea, or there's another addition to this with, um, what is it? DMT. So DMT is a much more intense um, hallucinogen. And when you take too much of it, it's described as falling into another dimension or breaking the plane or whatever you want to call it. And you basically get transport, transported into this dream state where you're perceiving unbelievable shapes and patterns and dimensions that you can never think possible. My idea is that it is opening up your consciousness to perceive, to the, perceive those things, a.e. the consciousness of the universe. So what you're actually looking at is a two-dimensional or further dimensional representation of everything in the universe, i.e. your mind on these psychedelics, your mind, which is based around consciousness, is coming out to perceive the universe itself in a geometric, physical representation. I wish I had more to add. I really wish I had more to add.